Uh, we're talking about mindfulness and meditation. Uh, so these are two uh, important practices that you can incorporate into your well-being. And today we are going to talk about a question that came up yesterday, and that is meditation for grief. Uh, we are then going to do a loving kindness meditation, a quick one. And we are then also going to talk about how to incorporate mindfulness and meditation into your daily life and make it simple for you. We do not want to complicate your life at all. So I thought we could start with a brief recap of what we did yesterday, which is talking about uh, meditation and uh, mindfulness, uh, and then talking about the health benefits. So I'm just going to run through that very quickly, uh, adding my uh, slides to the screen. Uh, so med there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do meditation, and they kind of can interconnect. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. But some of the meditation styles are mindful meditation, there's transcendental meditation, guided meditation, uh, focused meditation, movement meditation, loving kindness meditation, or meta meditation, which we are going to do today, and then body scan or progressive relaxation and visualization meditation. So there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. And like I said, they don't all mind, they aren't all necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, some of them, like you could do a guided meditation that's on mindfulness, or you could do a guided meditation on loving kindness. So there's uh, all sorts of different ways that you can combine them. Uh, but the whole idea is the health benefits that you get from mindfulness and meditation. And so mindfulness is also really about being fully present and engaged in the moment. And that way, um, you're aware of your thoughts and your feelings, and you're not distracted. And it, this is where you get into no judgment. Uh, so we're really looking at being mindful and having a good meditation practice. All right. So the benefits are that it will reduce stress. Uh, it can improve your concentration. Uh, these practices also will enhance your emotional well-being. Uh, they can promote uh, healthier sleep patterns, uh, reduce blood pressure, uh, and you can also focus uh, to reduce uh, pain that you have, especially somebody who has chronic pain. I'm not saying that it'll go away, but you can uh, use mindfulness and meditation to reduce the pain. Uh, you can also use it to fight addictions or help you with addictions. And I'm just going to say I put in very negative word here. So when you're fighting something, that's kind of a not not a very um, peaceful way of doing it. So I probably uh, should say something different how to um, handle addiction. So I'm trying to think of what would replace, be a place for that. Replace replace addictions yeah yeah not fight eliminate eliminate there you go that's a better word the same thing I'll like overcome. if you're that overcome addictions yay i like that one oj gets a star for that for sure uh it's the same thing when you say you're battling cancer this is all very like it's a very negative way to talk about it uh, but it's very common as well. So, you know, you want to find another way, like overcoming is a great word. Uh, I love that. Uh, it can help you uh, enhance your self-awareness and increase your loving kindness to others and the world and yourself. And it's very important if we aren't, uh, if, we, if we're not loving ourselves and kind to ourselves, we are not going to be able to bring that to other people around us. You have to fill your own cup first. Uh, very important. All right. So I wanted to talk a bit about meditation for grief now. Uh, and um, uh, that, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, here we go. Um, so 
when we're talking about grief, so we talked a bit about it yesterday, and I just wanted to um, talk a bit more. So it is meditation is actually a valuable tool when you are managing grief, because uh, it can provide you with the space for healing and reflection uh, during those difficult times. Uh, so here's some ways that uh, meditation can help with grief. One, it can help you to provide you with a sense of calm and stability. Uh, and so, you know, oftentimes when we're in grief, it's a very intense emotion. Uh, and this is something where over time, the intensity will reduce. But I have to say, uh, I have experienced uh, grief in a few different ways. And uh, even if you uh, have very low intensity because it's something that happened a while ago, you can still uh, be brought back into that intensity on an occasional basis. And I think the further away you get from the grief, the less uh, you'll have those episodes of intensity. But like, for example, um, something that happened well, I, I have a couple of examples in mind, but I'll talk about uh, two years ago or almost two years ago, uh, we had to um, put our uh, family pet Brody down. And um, even to this day, you know, I can go into a state where I am really sad and I can get very emotional about missing him. And that was two years ago. Um, I also... Um, when my daughter was five years old, she was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we went through a lot of emotion and a lot of grief during that time. Now, fortunately, she is uh, alive and healthy and just actually turned 33 years old on Sunday. So yay, uh, it's a good news story. However, I can still go back and remember those times when things were really tough and get very emotional about it. And that was uh, a long time ago, over, you know, over 25 years ago that that happened. So, you know, grief can come back, but it's just how often and how, how severe it is. Anyway, so by um, meditating, you can provide a sense of calm and stability uh, you know, a mindful breathing uh, and, or a focused meditation can help to ground you in those uh, situation. Um, you know, it, uh, meditation can help to facilitate the actual uh, emotional healing part. Um, so when you're meditating, it encourages you to be present and aware of what's going on uh, and get yourself out of your mind. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to process some of those complex emotions that are associated with the loss. Uh, it also helps to cultivate uh, acceptance. Uh, and that's um, one of the things, uh, accepting the loss is really important. And so meditation, uh, especially when you're going through mindfulness meditation, can help foster an attitude of acceptance and help you to uh, kind of move on to the new reality uh, without forcing uh, closure or um, um, before you're ready. And it can offer you with a connection to the deceased. Uh, so sometimes, it, you know, you can actually include visualizations uh, of individuals to get a sense of connection uh, to their loved uh, and those loved ones. Uh, it will also enhance your resilience uh, as well. Uh, you know, it can help to uh, maybe kind of come to peace and and uh, build your inner strength uh, and, um, you know, bring your mind to um, resilience uh, with the stress to the stress of that emotional pain. I can help again with your uh, sleep patterns because Grief can often interrupt your sleep patterns. So this way you can, uh, meditation uh, can help improve your sleep by calming your mind and reducing anxiety if you can do the meditation just before bed time. And then uh, it can also, uh, you know, you can do it in a group meditation, which would actually be 
uh, a way of being in a supportive community while you're, you're grieving. And so the practices that are suggested uh, for uh, grief are mindful meditation, the loving kindness meditation that we're going to do, and a guided visualization. So those are three. Uh, and also this, I did mention this yesterday, that grief is not, uh, meditation isn't a cure for grief. Uh, it can be a helpful component. Uh, but, you know, it's also important to be patient uh, and be without expectations and just uh, let the grief unfold. And, you know, it takes time to get over it, uh, for sure. Uh, and that's only human. Uh, but, you know, the more that we can uh, embody and uh, uh, use the tools like meditation and mindfulness, uh, the can kind of um, uh, maybe um, uh, make it a little easier uh, to get over. Uh, not that it is um, something that's easy to get over for sure, but you, you know, with the proper tools, it can help uh, with that whole process. All right. So are you guys ready for a mindful meditation? Uh, this is a, not a mindful meditation, a loving kindness meditation. I'm very ready. You are ready. Okay. Well, I am going to put on my music and uh, my music is actually, uh, let me see. I think I have to put on, share it first on the stage. Oh, I lost it. So here um, I'm going to, prep it so you can hear it, not just me. And then we can get into this meditation. Uh, and um, here we go. I'm just going to put on some low music. I might have to go back and put on some more. I'm not sure if it'll last. Uh, it's very low. All right. Uh, so I wanted to, um, this is a loving kindness meditation or also known as a meta uh, meditation. Uh, the practice helps us to cultivate compassion and loving kindness towards ourselves and others. It's especially comforting when you're in emotional pain or grief. Uh, and so we're going to be doing some phrases uh, that you can either recite out loud or you can say to yourself silently, uh, depending on uh, your personal preference. So if you're reciting them out loud, and that's fine, it helps to give you engagement and the vocal resonance helps to um, reinforce some of the intentions that are there. And also if you do it silently, it helps with your internal focus uh, and um, uh, it also will help you deepening your concentration. Or you could do a little bit of both, a little bit of silence and a little bit of um, um, saying it out loud. So I'll leave the choice to you. It is an individual choice. Um, but when we begin, so we're all, I hope, in a quiet place. We're sitting comfortably for the next few minutes without being disturbed. I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And then let your body relax. All right, so we're going to begin by focusing on ourselves as loving kindness starts from within. So breathe in deeply filling your lungs with air, and then exhale slowly. And as you settle into this moment, silently repeat the phrases towards yourself. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be healthy and may I be at ease. So may I be happy, may I be safe, may I be healthy, may I live at ease. So these intentions, allow these intentions of goodwill towards yourself to sink in 
with each breath and notice any feelings that might arise without judgment, simply returning to the phrases, may I be happy, may I be safe, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. All right, so now we are going to uh, bring in mind someone that you love dearly. Imagine their face or feel their presence with you. And so we're going to extend our feelings of loving kindness towards this person that you have in mind. So imagine somebody that you love dearly. And now repeat to them. May you be happy, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you live at ease. And so visualize these wishes reaching them, surrounding them with love and care. May you be happy, may you be safe, May you be healthy. May you live at me. And next, we are going to think of someone that you neither like nor dislike. So this could be someone that you see often, but you don't know very well. Maybe it's somebody, you know, a clerk at the grocery store or somebody like that. So you're going to extend the same feelings of loving kindness towards this person. So we're going to say, so visualize that person. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live at peace. Okay. And this practice helps us to break down barriers between us and others and recognize our human shared desires. And may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. <clears throat> And now I'd like you to gently bring into mind someone with whom you've had difficulty. This can be, uh, I know it can be challenging, but extending kindness to them is a powerful healing folks practice. All right, so come up, find, uh, think of someone that you have had difficulty with. And so with each breath, you're going to offer them goodwill. So may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. And may you live with ease. And this is not approving whatever actions they had against you or that you, uh, but that's freeing your heart from harboring resentment to the person. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. And may you live at, with ease. All right. And then we are going to be finally extending our loving kindness to all beings in the world. So we are going to spread these intentions outwards like ripples in a pond. May all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with me. Find a sense of connection and shared kindness with all life. May all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. And may all beings live with ease. All right. 
So I want you to take one more deep breath, letting the feelings of loving kindness fill you up. And now as you come to the end of this meditation, you can slowly open your eyes and carry with you the sense of loving kindness as you move throughout your day. And I'm thanking you for joining me on this practice of loving kindness. And I will say to you, may you be well, may you be happy, and may you be kind. Oh my, that was so thin. Take a deep breath. Awesome. How do you guys feel? How was that? I feel so light. I feel lighter. It was wonderful. Fresh. Yeah. That was awesome. You have such a calming voice. I, I, yes. I, I, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that because I, you know, my sometimes my voice comes across really slow and because it's calm. And I thought, oh, maybe this is one area where I would excel at, where the calm <laughs> voice would be good. Yay. That's good. Oh, I'm glad. So any comments on that process? You know, it seems actually so great. simple. Yeah, it seems so simple, that, but it really was very lovely. It feels mm -hmm. very relaxing. Yeah, I think that's where I first felt my heart really come out of my, uh, uh, really felt that love in my heart was when I did the uh, loving kindness for the first time. I was like, wow. And then uh, in the yoga, they would tell us to raise our heart, like, I don't know, out of our chest. And it's like, wow. That was a quite mind blowing experience for me. All right, so now that we're done that, We'll just talk about how we can incorporate uh, mindfulness and meditation into our uh, daily life uh, because, you know, we've talked about the health benefits. There really are some amazing uh, benefits to uh, these practices. All right. So um, uh, some of the things that you can do uh, for mindfulness practice, uh, just some tips. Number one is to start small. There's nothing saying that you have to spend half an hour, an hour doing these things. Um, they can be very small. Uh, and maybe it's just a few minutes a day, like five or 10 minutes. I think you can do that. Um, you can go and get a mindfulness um, meditation or a guided meditation for five or 10 minutes. Uh, and it's amazing, even though it's quick and uh, how much it can help you. Uh, one of the things that I uh, have done is just to do some deep breathing for a couple of minutes, do it just what breath work uh, as well, um, which helps. Uh, so it doesn't have to be something that takes a long time. Uh, I know for me, when I'm doing my meditation, I usually do uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, and sometimes it goes longer if I'm like really feeling it and I want to stay in that moment, I might stay longer. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can just start really small. Uh, it really helps to put it in your schedule, make it part of your daily routine uh, and come up with a, spe a specific time. So I already said that I do my meditation in the morning because if I don't do it in the morning and get, uh, uh, I just never seem to find time for it. Uh, so schedule uh, your meditation into your routine. And, you know, it could be in the morning, it could be for bed, could be at your lunch hour, however you want to do it, but just find a time and make it part of your routine. Uh, um, you can also do have a dedicated space, uh, a meditation area. And, you know, I know some people who have meditation rooms, but it could just be a corner of 
uh, your room or part of your living area that can serve as a tranquil spot. Uh, one of the things you can do is have an altar with some special things that you have uh, that you keep that will help you to kind of remember some special things. So having that physical space actually uh, can enhance your focus and make your practice more intentional and special. And especially if you have a little altar uh, and it doesn't have to be a big thing, you know, maybe it's a few pictures on the wall or a mementos that are really important to you. Uh, special things. Um, I know I actually like to meditate on my bed. That's my special place for meditation uh, with the door closed and uh, with my kitties. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can also use reminders. You know, that's one thing that I do quite a bit is I use like my now with everybody having a smartphone of some sort, you know, there's, uh, you can have reminders all day long. Uh, so you can set it on your phone, you can leave notes uh, for yourself, like your bathroom mirror, or your fridge, uh, you know, just to say, sort of say pause and practice your mindful meditation. And I have to, I have to tell you a, a little story. I do have uh, in front of me on my desk, I do have uh, a wall and I have a bulletin board that has some special quotes and things that I pick up. And one of the things that's on there is some affirmations. So I would be doing my affirmations uh, occasionally. And I was, I was in a board meeting, okay? A board meeting, virtual board meeting. And they were taking a 15 minute break. And I decided I was gonna do my affirmations. So I'm doing my affirmations out loud and I get this. <laughs> Debbie, you're not on mute. <laughs> Why did I slip away that? <laughs> but anyway, but you know what? This is the thing, right? It doesn't really matter what other people think. I was doing something that was positive, doing my affirmation. So uh, anyway. you were role modeling. You were role modeling. I was role modeling for them. But yeah, it was pretty embarrassing, though, I have to say. I don't think very many of the board members were there, but that was the chair is the one who pointed it out to me. <laughs> um, and you can also incorporate your mindfulness into your, um, uh, your daily activities. Uh, and, you know, there's a few places when you're eating, you can have some mindfulness about when you're eating. Uh, if you go for a walk, you can do that. Um, or, you know, even when you're brushing your teeth, you can practice mindfulness. Uh, and just really noticing any taste, sounds, and textures uh, when you're doing those things. So, uh, and when you're eating is really good. You can be very mindful of how many times you're chewing, how um, be mindful of your food that you're eating. Uh, which I like that part, you know, we're going to be mindful of those things. Um, you could get do guided meditations. Uh, this is a great tool. If you go on YouTube and just uh, search on guided meditations, you will get a ton of things that come up. You can even say five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, uh, and you'll get the length of time that you want. So uh, you can do that. Um, and there's some uh, apps as well that you can get to uh, do for meditation, uh, lots of different uh, places that will have uh, some kind of guided meditations. Uh, there's also mindful uh, breathing exercises that you can do. Uh, these are good when you're stressed out and uh, just taking a few deep breaths and focusing only on your the air that's going in and leaving your body. Uh, can be a quick and effective way to center yourself. Uh, and you can breathe in the positive air and let go of all the negative when you're breathing out. And I know um, every once in a while, I'll when I feel myself getting upset at something, I'll just stop, close my eyes and just breathe a couple of times uh, to recenter myself. So that that can help. Um, you can do body scanning where you basically scan your body. I think I mentioned that 
you know, yoga in yoga, we do that uh, quite a bit where you uh, at the start of the practice, uh, you know, you're either laying down or sitting down and you do a scan from head to toe of your body and notice different parts of your body, maybe things that might be feeling uh, discomfort, tension or relaxation uh, and um, uh, noticing it. And the point is with no judgment. So it's just to notice it and then let it go. Uh, so that's another one. I think I mentioned yesterday that I do a meditation every so often where um, we go through the body uh, and he talks about this lavender energy going through your body. And so what I do is I actually add lavender to uh, extract to my pillow and um, um, also put it on my wrists and behind my ears so that I get the full effect of the lavender Nobody yet has said anything to me about that either. <laughs> um, you can set a, again, similar to um, uh, putting uh, uh, um, uh, something on your phone to remind you. Uh, you can have a mindfulness bell, uh, which is, some, you know, um, it could be uh, if you hear the doorbell ring, your phone rings, a bird chirps or whatever. So you could kind of find some trigger that will uh, bring you into mindfulness. And these are things that you, you can practice. You might not be great at them at first, but if you're being mindful, you will eventually, you know, um, uh, get better at it and recognize it more often. Um, I have a practice of uh, for abundance of um, being very thankful for my the money that I have. So when I go and I'm spending money at the store, I will say arigato my money, which means thank you to my money uh, as it as I'm spending it. Uh, and of course, that to me was a hard thing to do because I never remembered it. So what I did is I put a little uh, cue on my on my cards. I have a sticky on all of my cards, my bank cards and everything that says Arigato on it. So that way I remember. So you can do all those things to help. Uh, and then you could spend a little bit of time at the end of your day uh, just to reflect on what you did and what might have been challenging. Uh, and then that it helps with your self-awareness uh, and also your gratitudes as well. So this is how I started my journal is by reflecting on some of these practices and how they went uh, rather than just kind of freestyle writing, which is not something that was very easy for me to do, but actually writing about your, you know, how your practices went, whether it was meditation or mindfulness uh, can really help you uh, also to continue to see any progress you have, but uh, you know, it really can help you, uh, just to also be mindful and remember to do these practices. And maybe one day the your journal is that I forgot to do the practice and then that uh, will spur you on. Or maybe you didn't do it because there was something going on. So it doesn't mean you have to do it every day, but it's really good to get into a routine and start small. Just pick one thing that really resonates with you that you think will help. And then you can build on that. Nobody says you have to become a, a meditation, meditation genius, you know, within the first uh, week. Uh, just smart, start small and you'll see what the benefits are and keep going from there. A journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Just take that one step. So any questions on what we covered here? No questions, but a comment. I found this very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. That was good. I really enjoyed doing the meditation with you guys. It was fun. I also like the fact that you said you can put up sticky reminders, like sticky notes and stuff, you know, what you say, your affirmations and all that. I really like that. It resonate with yeah. me a lot. All right. 
So you're so I'm gonna ask you, where did you put your sticky notes when you get home from your travel? Where are you? Yeah, sticky notes? I put them on my mirror because when I'm dressing up, when I'm getting dressed, I'm gonna put them on my mirror because I get to okay, I'm getting dressed and stuff. I'll just read that. Oh, this I'm amazing, I'm loved. Yeah. You know, those kind of affirmations are quite helpful. Yeah. Thank yeah, and I'm thankful for the day. I'm thankful for the gift of life and stuff. Mm -hmm. I I know people do stuff like that on their like their bathroom yeah. mirror when they're getting ready for the day, or if you have a mirror in your room. And uh, another one is to put something in your car to kind of remind yourself to be mindful about you know when you're driving because driving is a place where we can get really stressed out with all the cars, all the traffic, yeah. people, you know, cutting you off. And most of the time, I don't, I don't think people mean to be jerks on the road, but we take it that way when we're, and it's, it's one of the places where people get really upset because you're, you know, mostly in your car by yourself. It's pretty easy to, um, you know, get, get angry very quickly about what's going on around you. So, uh, you could put a mindfulness sticker on your dash and just say, you know, something that might resonate with you to help you to just not, don't let those things get to you because, uh, you know, the only person you're hurting is yourself in those situations. Uh, nobody else is, is bothered and hot and bothered about it, but you, eh, maybe the other guy is, and that's where road rage comes, but let's not go there. We are getting zen and meditating and not being into road rage. All right. On that note, we are going to close out another Deb show. And we will be back again tomorrow.